Welcome to Landscapes of Consciousness. My name is Michael Sternfeld, and we're about to go on a little journey, a journey exploring one of our favorite subject areas, the domain of consciousness. And I'm here with my friend and colleague, Harry Alto. Very pleased to be here, Michael. And I am, I'm glad too. <laughs> so I think we should tell a little bit where this idea got started to, to explore this, this area of consciousness. I've actually had the good fortune of meeting with Harry Alto and a small group of people every Saturday for lunch for the last three years. And our purpose was to uh, exchange and explore our experiences in growing consciousness. And it's been an absolutely fascinating process, a real growth process for all of us. And we decided it was so rich that we decided to share this with you in this video series. And with that, I think we should just dive in. And whenever we start thinking about consciousness, I always like to examine it in the first place, just the beginning. Why even talk about consciousness? What's the value of exploring it in the first place? It is a little bit in interesting to talk about consciousness as a field of uh, exploration, right? We don't usually think of it that way. And in my case, I've always had some, some kind of inner experience, some kind of something going on inside and I've always felt compelled to look at it because it's there. So, you know, you could kind of say seeing is believing. See, so, so I have this inner awareness and I, I look at it and I can talk about it. And so can you and so can anybody else. And depending on the clarity of that inner consciousness, uh, you can describe its details. It's kind of like a landscape. And that's an interesting <laughs> title. I love the title, Landscapes okay, of Consciousness, right. because <clears throat> I really see you, Harry, as an artist of consciousness. Meaning, and you are an artist. You're both a design artist and a fine artist. And I think you see the world in a very artistic way. And you also see your inner world in a very artistic way. So as these inner experiences have begun to grow, you know, what, what was the draw? What was the thing that pulled you in? I mean, what was the value of it? Any genuine inner experience intrinsic to the experience is some satisfaction. There's something good happening, There's something intriguing, something delightful there. And as a visual person, um, I'm always looking for a sight or a, um, something that I can see, right? An inner experience has a quality of seeingness to it. The knowingness of pure consciousness has, um, has a quality of luminescence or sight to it. And and you can actually begin to paint that or draw that or talk about that. And it compels itself, inner experience compels itself to talk, to paint, to uh, visualize. Hmm. That's interesting. There was once a wise sage that once <laughs> told me that um, this person... Other than you, you mean. <laughs> <laughs> Other than me, yeah. There was this person, actually this person was from Finland, Harry is from Finland, was talking to this wise, wise sage and said, you know, they wanted to start an art academy, and and I can say who this was, and I think we're going to come back to this later. It was Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, the founder of Transcendental Meditation, and he said to this person who really wanted to, you know, file, found this art academy in Finland, said, "I'll show you some real art," and that always struck me very deeply because, in a way, this inner domain of consciousness is a place of real art, not to demean the other areas of the fine arts, but. What is so artistically rich about it and, and attractive for you that, that it's worth spending all these years exploring its details? You know, often consciousness is thought of as uh, a field of silence or even emptiness. I've never experienced it like that uh, only. I've always experienced that there is this silence, there is this expansion, there is this field of um, unboundedness. However, along with that, there's this liveliness there, and if and this liveliness attracts you to look at consciousness itself to uh, see what there is, what what its structure is, if there is a structure, and. Over, over years, as I look into myself, as I look into this inner world of uh, the movement of consciousness or the liveliness of consciousness, I've, I've ceased, I see the structure of that consciousness as layers. Hmm. You know, I feel that we should, because you and I are familiar with the term yes. consciousness, yeah. anyone who's been meditating for a long time is familiar with the field of consciousness or on any spiritual path is familiar to some extent. So I'd like to, I think it's important then to define a little bit what I mean about consciousness 
or what or at least what the angle we're taking on consciousness. And in some circles, you could say that um, anthropologists and biologists might say that as the human nervous system evolved, this big brain structure that we have as homo sapiens, we developed the faculty of awareness and that self-awareness, and that distinguishes us as a special species, although they're finding that self-awareness in other higher primates and porpoises, for example. And so that, that consciousness is the emergent faculty of a highly developed awareness. Um, but then they've come out in this whole area of new physics to show that, that all the force and matter fields, are their source is this one unified field, and there's some indication that perhaps that unified field is a field of consciousness. But that's kind of abstract. I think when we talk about consciousness, I think you're talking about, correct me if I'm wrong, is that it, this, the, the, this real ability to become self-aware in a deep and compelling way that opens up a whole new universe. Am I getting that right? You are. And it's inter everybody has consciousness, whether mm -hmm. you're aware of it or not. And mm -hmm. most people don't think about it or, or talk about it. Mm -hmm. or, um, but I think most people intuitively grasp that there's something more to consciousness than than uh, something that's hidden it's actually there's there's something there and uh, many people have had flashes of, of this expanded feeling or 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 even uh, some liveliness that's that they can't explain that's the pure consciousness being looked at and being appreciated and everybody has that pure consciousness it's the natural state of human uh, uh, awareness is that there's a lively field of unbounded consciousness that can be appreciated, can be seen, and can be talked about, can be, can be even uh, as if copied onto a piece of paper mm. because there's something there to see. You once told a story, I think, to me, something as a young boy, when you had that first glimpse of this, this underlying field of something. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like telling that about it? I thought it was really delightful. Well, my experiences or glimpses of these kind of experiences started uh, uh, many years ago in Finland. Maybe, maybe I was five or four years old. Okay, so um, it was cold. I was wearing a heavy felt coat. And every day I'd go outside. That was the habit, you know, put a kid outside. And, you know, little boys have this, uh, let's see what happens if I do this kind of sense to them, right? Mm -hmm. So there was this basement window there, you know, that I, you know, about this level, and I was, you know, about the same height, and I'd look at it, and there was wire in it, and I remember this very clearly for some reason, and I kept looking at that mirror every day and said, well, there's wire in it, so I should be able to hit it, and nothing would happen. So I picked up a rock one day and started banging this, uh, uh, this window, and the next thing I knew that my father had grabbed me by, uh, my coat collar, and and it was a bit of a shock, and immediately my consciousness expanded. This silent field of unbounded, I can, I remember it to this day because it's that silent field of consciousness is still there. It's just bigger, and I know more about it. But, um, <clears throat> so here I am, my father holding me by the coat collar and yelling at me, "What are you doing? What are you doing?" And me having this unbounded experience as I'm as if I'm above looking down at this. What's going on? This little, this little affair doesn't mean anything. I didn't do anything wrong. Everything's great. And I remember that so clearly that it actually started, even at that, it started me thinking, what was that experience? I want more of that. That's great. It wasn't a divorcing. It was more like um, everything kept going on, but there was this much bigger, much more fulfilling thing happening as well. So it started there. So you, you, in a way, I, I mean, I, I can see, I can visualize with you this whole scene. It's as almost like there was a bleed through from this other world, and maybe you can correct me, maybe it's not another world, but there was a bleed through almost like a, an image that I'm getting is like when in the old days when we'd watch film on acetate and it would burn through by the projector and then the reality kind of like uh, behind the scenes peeled away and you could see the real light of consciousness behind projected on the screen. Uh, yeah, I think that's a really nice way of describing it, you know, and mm -hmm. over the years I started getting glimpses of all these layers. It's mm -hmm. not one layer, many layers making one big layer, many layers making a, a kind of a see-throughness to consciousness, and there was a silent level, 
completely unbounded. Mm. Then there was this more subtle level that had um, structure to it or beautiful things to it, beautiful sights to it. And then there's this so-called gross relative in it. To me, it's all one. And even then, I realized it was one continuum of experience. So you really began to see this as a continuum from the yes. subtlest level Absolutely. to the grosser and grosser level. Absolutely. Not like two different realities. No, one, one reality, many, uh, you know, it's like a human being, you know. You, we, have, we have millions of uh, atoms or billions of atoms and more and molecules and physical systems and the head and the arms and everything. So complicated, right? Huge physiology, complicated. But that physiology generates this very simple experience. Mm -hmm. Speaking of experience, maybe you could just describe, I mean, you've had a lot of these very powerful and very rich, uh, whether you call them experiences in consciousness or profoundly artistic experiences of this inner world. Maybe you could describe an example of, of one that, you, you know, strikes you that might inspire us. You know, the, the most satisfying aspect of consciousness to me is the the benefits that you get from having that experience of pure consciousness there's a there's a benefit inside the experience of self-awareness you immediately feel good you immediately feel some uh, delight delightful feeling and it's intrinsic or part of the experience of expansion that's more important to me and that's what has always attracted me to pure consciousness. So I have this abstract, unbounded experience, but what good is it? Mm. Right. That's always the question that I ask you. I mean, what do you, what, do you, what do you want out of it? I mean, what do you get out of it? Why even go for it? You go for it because, like any experience, you know, for instance, uh, when I was a kid, maybe I was 13 or 14 years old, I wanted a bicycle. My, and I had been pestering my father, buy me a bicycle, please get me a bicycle. I'll have all this freedom. Mm -hmm. and, and so finally he bought me a bicycle. It was kind of an old, old thing and it was house paint blue and all kinds of stuff. But I loved that bicycle. I think I loved it more than my parents. I loved it more than anything in the world. Mm -hmm. That was great, I'd ride it around. And then the second day, it's kind of interesting, I noticed that I didn't like it quite as much. So that inner feeling of likingness or like, that I liked, I loved this bicycle. God bless, and the third day, God bless, and the fourth day, God bless, and until I, it turned into a bicycle again. Mm -hmm. So I realized that the experience that I was having wasn't really about the bicycle at all, it was about what I was having inside. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's what I mean about consciousness. It's the effect of having that experience that is so delightful. It's inside the experience. So what I really wanted was I didn't want that feeling to ever go away. I wanted the bicycle to last forever, the feelings that the bicycle gave me. And that's something somehow enfolded or embedded within this deeper experience Absolutely. of consciousness or self-actualization or self-illumination, whatever you would want to call it. It's intrinsically a satisfying. Absolutely. Just by its very nature, it needs no rhyme or reason to explain it. And it, is, it attracts you to go in that direction. You don't need any more motivation. Just the fact that you like it, you go for it. Mm. Can you give us a little bit more of a taste of the kind of the flavor of this kind of experience for you? And w what it is? I know it's hard to put into words, but maybe you can. Okay. Um, when I was in high school, um, every day I'd go through a stage where I'd go through a stage of very, it just came out of nowhere, intense happiness. It was, I was so intensely happy. Every day for about an hour or two, I'd have to go outside, I'd have to run or jog or something to tone down that uh, feeling of happiness, right? It was a great feeling, but it was very intense. Now, so I was wondering, where did that happiness come from? And I recognized that there was underneath that happiness, there was another percolating feeling. And, and when I looked at that, that consciousness more closely, what I noticed is that not only is there a silence and an unboundedness there, there's a, 
there's a field of subtle sight, subtle hearing. There's a sound there. There's a there's a sight there. There's a, there's there's a, there's stuff happening there that you can see, and it's delightful. It's um, it's blissful, even. You know, I don't really like that word, bliss. But, you know, <laughs> kind of I know, I know. For, a, for when you're fin from Finland, <laughs> bliss is like, whoa, no, we don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. No, but uh, you know, I could go into more detail about that, and maybe we'll do that at a in in the next session. But just the delightful feeling that comes from not just from the silence, but the movement of that silence. The bubbling of that silence, the reverberation of that sound. Now, this bubbling and reverberation I'm talking about is actually something. It isn't. It isn't abstract. You can actually see it, know it, feel it. So the, we're, you know, we've heard this phrase before. This idea of dynamism within the silence. That's exactly. And that's actually where the real action lies. That's where the action is. And speaking of real action, I know that you know it's interesting. You've been telling these stories in progression from when you were a little boy, 13 bicycle, and now we're in high school. You know, I know a little bit later then you also um, got um, exposed to um, Maharishi, Mahesh Yogi, and you learned Transcendental Meditation, and that seemed to have a real acceleration uh, effect on this process. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, around about my mid-twenties I started Transcendental Meditation, Maharishi's Transcendental Meditation, and I had already uh, I was already having an experience, and before I started meditating, I had the experience that I, it was abstract, but that I was awake all the time. I was awake at night, inside I was awake. I didn't fall asleep. Body fell asleep, but my mind did. Consciousness was awake all night, all day, all night, all day. And that had been going on for years. Mm. I didn't know what it was. Um, except there was nothing wrong. It was, it was nice. It was terrific. Um, and then I started TM, and one meditation, this this field of silence that was as if in the background or up there somewhere, and, and was just an abstract experience of silence, um, started started um, being more delightful, more uh, bubbly, more happy, more. I could literally see the the that expansion start to. Integrate. You know, and the interesting thing about um, this field of silence is that what I noticed when I started TM is it connected my regular activity with that silent field. It was like something in between that put them together more and made them integrate and made them more one experience. Not that the layers went away, but more like they became one experience. It's interesting because many people on a spiritual path end up really delving into that field of silence, that internal world, and they see it perhaps as a separate reality from this outer field. And I think it's very interesting that you happen to be, um, you're an integrated man. I mean, you have well, a, you I run a large, you run sure. a large business. That's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you have a beautiful wife, yeah, Kathy. Yeah. You have two beautiful uh, daughters who help you run this business. I find it interesting that you named your business Creative Edge, which I think really fits you very well because you are on a creative edge with, you're on an edge of consciousness. But, but I'm just curious of how you have an integrated life where you're really involved in the world. So what you were just talking about is this bridge between this inner world and the outer world, and, and that uh, the spiritual growth is not something that's separate. It's completely integrated in daily life. It's certainly been my experience that the, my experience hasn't, well, I'll take that back. It has led to more and more silence, mm -hmm. more and more expansion, more and more abstraction, but along with that has been more and more integration of regular life with that field. And I like to say the greatest thing about silence is that it's not silent. Mm. It's actually a field that permeates, is part of the subtle levels of your consciousness. You could even say the divine levels of your consciousness. And also of regular life. The happiness that you feel in uh, regular life is the same happiness you feel inside. It's the same uh, happiness that bubbles out of this field of pure consciousness. So it's true. I, I can relate on the level of my own experience. But I think um, this is really reminds me of just something that you, I know you've been working on for a long time. It just so happens you've been working on your first book, which mm. is interestingly enough called Landscapes in Consciousness. It was kind of almost accidental that we called this video series the same title of the book, but we couldn't think of a better name for the video series. 
and it just happened to fit perfectly with the title of your book. How does that, what's coming out in this book? I know we're going to talk about this more in the next episode, but just, uh, I know you wanted to just talk about understanding a little bit, what the understanding of consciousness does for us. The, I never, first of all, I never thought I'd write a book, okay? I mean, about, I'm kind of private about these things have been for years and years, so here I am writing a book, just like, you know, many, many people have done. But what I saw, or what I thought, that in writing this book I wanted to convey is that regular life, whether you're a business fellow, you're a musician, doesn't matter what your life is, it's connected to a subtle field of consciousness, a, a beautiful subtle field of consciousness, and it's connected to unboundedness. And that it doesn't matter what you're doing in your regular life, it, it, it's part and parcel of the experience of the growth of consciousness, and it's part and parcel of the enlightened experience in general. So. So the book has a lot of elements of understanding. Understanding, you know, we haven't talked about understanding very much. When I started the TM program, the thing that really woke up, I wanted to know what this experience mm. is. I'm not an intellectual at mm. heart. I'm kind of a feeling kind of guy. And, but what I noticed with any experience of pure consciousness or subtle experience of, of the more subtle levels, there's internal to the experience, there's this understanding, there's this knowledge to it. You could even say the knowingness of, of subtle experience is the experience. The liveliness of that silent field when it's, when it's self-aware is a knowingness. Knowingness is an intelligence, there's something there. So you start thinking about it and you start putting it all together. Hmm. So I think that's a, maybe a good place to uh, close up because we always want to leave people wanting more. Dangling. <laughs> 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 We're just getting some feeling that this field of consciousness is a very, it is a powerful, it is a dramatic field. It's, to say it isn't as dramatic, the most dramatic mm -hmm. things that have happened to me has happened in consciousness and, and maybe we can get into those in the next session of ours, yeah. Sounds like a good place. Yeah. So I'm wishing everyone good consciousness and happy trails in the process. <laughs>